Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I just advise uh, brothers and sisters that it's highly recommended to pray witr at home, not in the mosque. That's highly recommended in Sunnah. The place of witr is not the mosque, is at home. If you want to pray in mosque, make some rak'at, but witr, always do it at home. Rasulullah said that the best place for man to pray is at home, except obligatory prayer. Because there is some objectives here for Islam. He wants this buyut, our homes, to have barakah. Not your salah only in the mosque, and your home is just for dunya. No. When you come to home, the first thing is recommended to do is to pray. Number two is for your children. Then you see, your children can see you after you come from mosque, see you pray in the mosque every single day at home, so they, they will learn from this. So that's very bitter. It's better to make it late before you go to bed, or if you have azima and you can wake up before Fajr, that's even better. If not, then make the last thing. Before you go to bed, then make wudu and pray witr. That's better. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbi ajma'in. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala abdika wa rasulika sayyidina Muhammad. So we're still in Surah Al-Hujurat. And last time we started the Surah, we said it's Surah Madaniya. It's very important Surah for every believer, especially nowadays because it's focused on the ethics and morals that Muslims should have in their society. And the surah links Iman to the ethics and morals. It means your morals and ethics, your akhlaq, it just indicate your level in Iman. In another word, how you treat people, how you treat your parents, your siblings, your spouse, your neighbors, your friends, your colleagues, your co-workers, your business partners, how you treat them, it indicates your level in Iman. In this surah, you'll see this link very obvious. That some people, they say, we are mu'min. He said, no, you just interest, you Muslims. Iman, which is high level, still not enter. Why? Because you should change your behavior, your manners. When your manners become the best, then that means your iman now in high level. Very important. In this surah also, Surah Al-Hujurat, the rooms of Rasul, the house of Rasulullah Sallam, he said rooms, Hujurat, to indicate that incident happened, which we talked last time and today also, and we'll talk about today, but also to indicate that this surah specifically about what happened between Muslims, the manners and ethics between Muslims. When we improve our manners, then after that surah in the end, we'll say, Ya ayyuhan nas, universal call. Then we can talk to people. But before that, we should fix our manners first, especially all misagreements all disagreement between us as surah will illustrate insha'Allah. will illustrate insha'Allah. Also, so there is five, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, five calls for believers, and one call for all mankind. These five calls, every one of these five calls to address one issue. The first call, يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله. That's the first one, which is here the set. What's your sources? When any conflict or disagreement take place, what's your source that you'll that you'll fix this conflict? Depend to what? To the norms, traditions. Or depend to Quran and Sunnah. So this first ayah now set the most important now thing in ethics and morals. We as Muslims take our morals and ethics from Islam, from Quran and Sunnah. If the whole society say to something it's right and Quran and Sunnah say it's wrong, we'll go to Quran and Sunnah. 
because we are believers, we are slaves and servants of Allah. He is the one who set the morals and ethics. And this is very important. Well, some people think that the ibadah is just to pray and fast, and, but morals and ethics for some Muslims depend to the norms and traditions. No. Islam set this system of morals and ethics. So the first ayah told us, take your manners from the Quran, the morals. Ayah told us, if any conflict happen, then go to Quran and Sunnah to fix that problem. Very essential. That's why if any Muslim now, if we, if we have any disagreement between any issue, we should ask, does Quran or Sunnah say anything about this? Because we have our sources. Also, when the traditions go against Qur'an and Sunnah, that's now a test for the believers. And it's a hard test. Because norms and traditions are so strong. Because it's for ages. And if you go against all the society will look at you as you are as someone want to break something sacred. But Qur'an teach us, no. If the traditions go against Quran and Sunnah, very obvious, then you have to go against them. You have to advise your family, family very gentle, in very gentle way. So that's لا تقدم بين يدي الله ورسوله. Also, لا تقدم is if you think that you have opinion to solve this problem better than what Allah said, then you have to think about this. لا تقدم. Don't proceed your opinions before Quran and Sunnah. So that's number one. Number two. يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي ولا تجهروا له بالقول كجهر بعضكم لبعض أن تحبط أعمالكم وأنتم لا تشعرون. Now to Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Respect the leader. The leader of the ummah is Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. So Sahaba, Allah told them to respect Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Don't raise your voice above the voice of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Don't speak to him. As you speak to anyone, any individual, this is the one Allah had chosen to be the messenger of Allah and the best messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we talked last time that this is also for us to respect Rasulullah sallam by learning his seerah, his life. When he's mentioned, when we mention his name, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, straight away we should say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's not permissible for Muslim to say his name only without Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To say Muhammad went, Muhammad go, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's a sin. To say just the name Muhammad without Rasulullah or without Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not any individual. So if, if anyone say that, we should remind him. Some people they say just not intentionally, so we should remind them. Usually when I teach any class, if any one of my class and one of my, some of students here, my students, if anyone say Muhammad, Muhammad without Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he should stand up and say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ten times. That's as a punishment. Don't say Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam without Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's a big problem. Even Allah Almighty, He never called Rasulullah Sallallahu Muhammad in Quran. He never do that. When he talk about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he will talk about him. He say Muhammad, Muhammad or Rasulullah. But when he call him, he say Ya ayyuha nabi, Ya ayyuha Rasul. Only Rasulullah sallam. And he want to show us that he is ex- Rasulullah sallam is high status even among the Anbiya. In the Quran, he call Anbiya with their own name. يا إبراهيم قد صدقت الرؤيا يا نوح بيط بسلام منا يا موسى إني اصطفيتك على الناس برسالات يا عيسى 
Ya Yahya, khud al kitab biquwa. So he called, Ya Dawood, inna ja'annaka khalifatan fil ard. But when he came to Rasulullah Sallam, he never said Ya Muhammad in Quran. There is no Ya Muhammad in Quran. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He always, Ya Ayyuhal Rasul, Ya Ayyuhal Nabi. He want to teach us. Why? Because this is, Rasulullah Sallam is our role model. That's why we mention his names many times during the way, during the day. Do you know that every one of us mentioned the name of Rasulullah Sallam at least 54 times? Do you know that? Because when you pray five times a day, you mention the name of Rasulullah Sallam 54 times. How is that? Because every tashahud, there is six times you mention the name of Rasulullah Sallam. Assalamu alayka, ayyuhan nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi wa salli. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad. Kama sallayta ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim. Wabarik ala muhammad wa ala ali. This six times. In Fajr six times. In Zuhur twelve. In Asr twelve. In Maghrib twelve. In Isha twelve. That's fifty-four times. That's in obligatory salah. What if you pray sunnah? What if you listen to adhan, which is every time, two times? Shadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Shadu anna Rasulullah. There's a type of dhikr when you sit in the morning and evening is to give the durood to sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to salat wa salam ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa You know, this is something amazing because all the adhkar is about praising your Lord. This is understandable. But one type of adhkar is to make dua for a person because he is the best person, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why this? Because many things. I'll mention two things. Number one, Rasulullah is the one who brought the guidance. When you make dua for him, that indicates that you are very grateful of the blessing of guidance. You know, someone give you a million dollar or billion. He come to you and said, that's a gift from me. Billion. You'll never forget that person in your whole life. Billion is nothing compared to the guidance. That's why you mention his name a lot. Because we are very happy about what he brought for us. Hidayah, which we know Allah now, which is the best ni'mah. Number two, Rasulullah is our role model. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Excellent example. You need to remember Rasulullah always to take him as a role model. Because we as a human being, we are a social creation. It's easy for, in our nature, we always want to imitate someone. That's why the leaders of society are very few people who lead the whole society. Because this is the nature of us to imitate someone. Look at some youngsters. Nowadays, if they love a football player, they will try to search about everything about him. Which, what's his favorite restaurant, his favorite color? Is it for country to spend the holiday? What's his favorite number? Something crazy. That's out of love. So Rasulullah you should love him more than anyone. So that's why you should mention his names a lot. So you sit down morning and say, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala abdika wa rasulika Sayyidina Muhammad. So that's because he's role model. So that's why the second ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu is about Rasulullah and then he praised in the third ayah those who respect Rasulullah Sallam and they, they lower their voice in front of his presence. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَغُضُّونَ أَصْوَاتَهُمْ عِنْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ They lower their voices in front of Rasulullah Sallam. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ امْتَحَنَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ لِلتَّقْوَىٰ Allah has proved their iman, their, their taqwa in their... Why he mentioned قلوبهم, their hearts. 
What's the connection between lower the voice to respect Rasulullah and the hearts? That's the main theme of Surah Al-Hujurat. Your manners indicate what is in your heart. Because they respect Rasulullah and they speak quietly in his presence, Allah said their hearts are sound. When you respect your parents, that's an indication that your heart is sound. Here many Mufassirin mention that respect Rasulullah is also this indicate to respect those Allah Taala command us to respect. And the first example here is our parents. Because when Allah said, don't raise your voice in the presence of Rasulullah he said also about the parents, don't raise your voice. Don't shout to them. وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا The same thing here, because you should respect your parents also. And Allah Taala, when he talk about parents, he said, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا He didn't say, وَإِلَى الْوَالِدَيْنِ أَحْسِنْ إِحْسَانٍ in Quran can come with إِلَى أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكِ إِلَيْكِ But with walidain, it's with ba. Ba, it means something close. بِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانَ So when Yusuf alayhi salam talk about his Lord and he feel that strong connection, he say, وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي He talk about Allah. He didn't say, وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ إِلَيْ That's so far. وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي So your parents you should respect. It's just shouting to your parents, that's a sin. Even it's during the arguments. If you argue with them and you raise your voice, that's a sin. Even you are right and they are wrong. But to raise your voice in their presence, that's a sin. Because when you grow up, you have children and you are now 60 years old. In the eyes of your parents, you still, you still that child. One day they raise you and they change your nappy and they, you're still you're a child in their eyes. So when you raise that, send a message to them, that's disrespect. Sometimes when we are young, we are in upstairs and our parents call us. So we said that, we are coming. But they didn't hear us. So they say it again. I'm coming. They say it third time. So the child, I'm coming. That's a sin. They don't hear you. Don't shout. That's a big problem. So Allah said, وَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَ أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا Sometimes you obey. Many people, they obey their parents. But they say, off. Their mom called them to do something. Oh, okay, I will do it. You do it and you take a sin. Can you see? Just because this off. Because when your parents, when you are a child, your parents did everything for you out of excitement and love. And you now return it to them out of hate, hatred. So when they do something for you, out of love. When you do for them, you do it. But you show that you don't like it. That's a sin. So many scholars mention in this ayah, respect Rasulullah is also indicate to respect those people Allah command us to respect. Especially our parents. Especially our teachers. And those who teach you, you should respect them. Especially our elders. Elderly people are special in Islam. You can't talk to any old man or woman in a normal way. Either they are Muslims or non-Muslims. Elderly people are something very special in Islam. You should show them respect. So Allah Taala praised these people and said their hearts are sound. So that's a good indication that a good manna indicate a good sound heart. So sound heart is not about appearance. It's not only about that you, 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 you go and pray in the mosque. That's not enough. 
but how you treat people that will now will know what is in your heart. And Allah said after that, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُنَادُونَكَ مِنْ وَرَاءِ الْحُجُرَاتِ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ Now is the situation with the ayat revealed. Those people who yunadunak, who shout to you, who call you loudly. Munadat is when you call someone loudly. And this is a very important term in Quran too, because sometimes Allah wa ta'ala said, uh, يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٍ well, This will take a lot of time. Leave it now. But yunadunakum is, 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 is something is when you speak loudly. But يَقُول It means just you say. Yunaji It means you say very quietly. He said, يُنَادُونَكَ مِنْ وَرَاءِ الْحُجُرَاتِ Hujurat is the house of Rasulullah Sallam. They came outside and they shout loudly. O oh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They made two mistakes. They mentioned his name without Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then they shout to him. The third mistake, they came to his own houses. They don't wait for him to come to the mosque. وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ صَبَرُوا If they became patient and wait for you patiently till you finish your nap and come to the mosque, that will be better for them. لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ So this now indicates that incident, which there is a lot of commands. Allah Tawarak teach the companions and teach us to respect Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. That when, when, when Sahaba talk about Rasulullah sallam or talk to Rasulullah sallam, they always have a lot of respect. Some of them, he, he initiate a swear, a new swear that no one say that swear before. Some of the Sahaba, when he swear, he always swear like this. وَالَّذِي كَرَّمَ وَجْهَ Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I swear by the one who honored the face of Rasulullah So, and some of Sahaba, when they give bay'ah, give the promise to Rasulullah and put their own hand, their right hand with the hand of Rasulullah they never touch anything dirty with that right hand because they touch the hand of Rasulullah so when they speak to Rasulullah they speak very in, in, in the best manner. But the amazing thing in, in ayah is how Allah ended this ayah. He said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُنَادُونَكَ مِنْ وَرَاءِ الْحُجُرَاتِ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ Most of them, they don't understand. They don't understand the good manners. They don't understand your position. They don't understand. Then he said, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ صَبَرُوا حَتَّى تَخْرُجَ إِلَيْهِمْ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ If they wait patiently till you come out and talk to them, it will be better than to them. Then he said, وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Subhanallah. It's you expect that he will say something very harsh to them. But in opposite, he said, Allah is the most merciful, the all-forgiving. Subhanallah. It means all these things, he just, he just teach that society. He want Muslims to be the best society in the world. And he know our weaknesses. That's why, when this manners and ethics, he will say, Ghafoorur Rahim. And he will repeat that again, as we said, in next time, inshallah. It means he give us chance after chance. Why? Because changing your manners and ethics is not an easy process. It's very difficult. Because manners and ethics become habits. And it's very difficult to change your habits. And you know, nowadays, 
the most selling books nowadays just about habits, how to change your habits. All these habits, why? Because when you change your manners, this is difficult. It became habits now, and you want to change it. You need to do it slowly. You have to process. Sometimes you will make mistakes. You learn from your mistakes. Because Allah is the creator. He knows us. So he said, Wallahu ghafoorur rahim. Try again. Try again. Till you improve your manners. That's why I advise myself first, and all of my brothers and sisters here, to sit with ourselves and choose just one manner and one just one manner. One manner that we see it's against what Allah and His Messenger said. And that manner is in our habits now. You may say, no, but I have more than that. No, just choose one and focus on that. Ask yourself how I'm going to change that. Maybe sometimes I shout to my parents loudly in the, during the argument. I will, I will fix that. I will change that. Put that and sit with yourself and ask how I'm, I'm going to do it. If you don't know, ask someone wise about that. Do a process and check yourself every week. If you change that just in three months, that will be amazing. Wallahu ghafoorur rahim. Then he said now, the third, ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. The first one is what's your sources? When there is any conflict, is Quran and Sunnah second, respect Rasulullah Sallam. Third, now third and fourth and fifth is about the society, about the manners and ethics between us. How we can improve the manners to live in the society between us. So he start with this. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. إِنْ جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقٌ بِنَبَئٍ فَتَبَيَّنُوا He start with, be careful when anyone bring news for you about someone else. Verify this news. Don't believe anything you hear. Don't forward anything you receive. Be careful. Why he start with this? Because many problems in society caused by news, by false news. So Islam, Quran, he pay a lot of attention for false news. In Surah An-Nur, he mentioned nearly two pages just about how we receive the news and in the slander of our mother Aisha. Because spread false news is a big problem in the society. And we need this nowadays because we live in a day that we live in a media time, social media, or news, fabricated news, which is they don't have no, no, any single proof, spread around the world. After a few years, we realize it's just a rumor. So we live in very difficult time. We live in... in a, a, a time which is a lot of information. When you are in any WhatsApp group, so that's a big problem. There's some people, they job is just for forward. And usually they don't, they don't read what they forward. When you see, if, oh, it's a new message, forward. And some of them said, forward and you get reward. MashaAllah. If you forward to 10 people, you get a lot of reward. And they saw so your mobile phone is full of, what's this? And the problem with that news will, is a hadith, maybe a fabricated hadith, a weak hadith. We don't even look, just forward. That's a big problem. Sometimes, sometimes these, our elderly scholars, some of the scholars I know personally, that they spread the rumor five times that he passed away. And he's still alive. Every time, or oh, the WhatsApp group, and they call his family. Oh, may Allah forgive him. Who? Your father. What's that? Because they just receive and... So, because they believe. Why? Because who told you this? Everyone talk about it. Ah, everyone talk about it, become an evidence. 
Rasulullah said in Sahih Muslim, كَفَى بِالْمَرْءِ إِثْمًا أَنْ يُحَدِّثَ بِكُلِّ مَا سَمِعَ It's a sin, a great sin for a person that he believe everything he heard. Because that's not a believer. You should verify it. Especially if the news is about someone else. You should be very careful. Especially if the news is about the owner of someone else. Especially if the news is about a whole society. If the news is about a certain country, a certain race, that will be more problem. So that's why, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, when he talk about our relation together, he start with false news, verify it. Because that news can lead to a war. That's why just after two ayat, وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتَلُوا When two groups fight each other. That's after what? False news. False news can bring a hatred between society. That's why this surah emphasizes this. Even if the news, he will say later, if the, even if the news, the news are right, but it's about someone else, don't spread that news. Someone come to you and said, I was with your friend last night and he talked badly about you. It's right news, definitely. He talked bad, badly about you. But why you spread this news? Backbiting is not lying. It's a very important point. Backbiting, someone who said something true. But he exposed that to someone to to initiate hatred. So it's something truth, but not any truth you will transfer it. Think about it. Consider, consider it first. Okay, what's the consequences if I told you he talked badly about you? I just initiate the hatred. That's it. And we are Muslims. So he said, إِن جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقٌ بِنَبَئٍ فَتَبَيَّنُوا فَاسِقٌ in the next ayah, he will say, Al-Kufr, Wal-Fusuq, Wal-Isyan. Similar to each other. But Kufr is the greatest one, disbelief. Then he said Fusuq, then he said Isyan. He said Fusuq before Isyan. It means Fusuq is more dangerous than Isyan. <coughs> when Allah Taala talk about Adam and Iblis, Allah gave both of them commands and both of them disobey. Adam don't eat from that tree, Adam ate from that tree. Iblis prostrate to Adam, he refused. <coughs> but what's the difference between two, these two cases of disobedience? That Adam, Allah said, Fanasiya Adam. He just someone convinced him. And when he realized his fault, he said, Oh Allah, it's my fault, forgive me. But Iblis opposite, out of arrogance. But the point here is, when Allah talked about Adam, he said, Wa'asa Adam, Isyan. When he talked about Iblis, Fafasaka an Ami Rabbi. Kana min al jinni, Fafasaka an Ami Rabbi. I mean, fisya, fisk is above isyan. What is fisk? Here translated sometimes ungodly. Fasik is a sinner. But usually fasik is when he is famous with sin. I mean, he sin publicly. Because it's come from fasaka. There's a type of animals in the Arabia. When it comes from its house, Publicly like this, they called fasaqa. So fasaqa, it means he didn't do the, the, the sin privately. No, publicly. It means he is known as a liar, known as slander, that gospel, that, that one who always spreads the false news, that's fasaqa. He said, if you receive a news from fasaqa, but nowadays, fasiq also can get a broad definition. 
Because we live in a time, very difficult time. That we live in a time that some people, some news, they fabricated news from nothing and spread it ev- everywhere. So we should be careful always. Fatabayanu, be careful. Verify it. Make sure of it. Why? Because maybe you harm some people out of that. And then you will be, you regret after that. You spread and you jump to the conclusion. And after that you regret. Nadimin. Grateful. So this ayah, number, ya ayuhaladina number three is very important. So brothers and sisters, number one, don't forward what you receive before you verify it. When you receive something in the group chat, so please verify it first. If there is ayah or hadith, if there is some news even, false news, if there is something talk about again it's some people, just keep it with your phone. Don't spread it. Break that cycle. And when you forward to someone, make sure that they will read it. Some people, they forward a long message. No one would read it. Why then you busy the people with this? So that's why, that's number one. Number two, those in news, when you verify news, be careful. If that news against someone or owner of someone, then you have to be very careful. The default here is don't talk about this news. Even it's true. Someone who is righteous, he did that. Leave it. Don't spread this type of news. Or when you hear it the first time, verify it means the default here, if it's about the society, no, it's not true. Till I verify it. There's an amazing ayah in Surah An-Nur when Allah talked about the slander of our mother Aisha. He said, When you receive the news by your tongues. Wait a minute. You receive news, we receive news by our ears, not by our tongues. Allah said, when you receive the news by your tongues. What does that mean? It means that the normal process is to receive the news by your ears. Your ears send that message to your brain. The brain verify it. Then give the decision to the tongue to talk. But all this process is gone. Allah said, you even just received by your tongues. That's how forward. Huh? Tongue straight away. وَتَقُولُونَ بِأَفْوَاهِكُمْ Afwaik, it is you, and you say by your mouth, mouth, what you have no idea. All the people, they talk by their mouth. Is that right? Why Allah said, and you said by your mouth, what you have no idea. It means again, you don't think about it. You don't send it to your brain to think about it. You just say it without thinking. Then he said, وَتَحْسَبُونَهُ hayina." And you think it's something insignificant, just news, spread the news. Allah said, وَهُوَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَظِيمٌ It's something big. According to Allah, this type spreading false news is a great sin. So that's why this surah is amazing, that we teach us this. And then he said to the Sahaba of the Prophet ﷺ, to the Sahaba of the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, This ayah talk about the companions. He said, imagine if Rasulullah Sallallahu is not among you. What will happen of all of this? Why the society of companions the best? The main reason because Rasulullah Sallallahu is there. And he can fix a lot of problems. لَوْ يُطِيعُكُمْ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْرِ لَعَانِدْتُمْ If Rasulullah go with your tendencies, with your opinions all the time, the consequences will be disaster. But he knows better than you. 
And Allah Taala praised Sahaba. This is one of the places that Allah praised Sahaba, with some other places. Our companion he said, "ولكن الله حبب إليكم الإيمان." Allah made iman beloved to you. Sahaba they love iman in a way is amazing. وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ And he beautify the iman in your hearts. Subhanallah. Only Allah can do that. And he praised Sahaba in several places. And then he talk about Sahaba. كَرَّهَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكُفْرَ وَالْفُسُوقَ وَالْعِصْيَانِ He made kufr and fusuq and isyan. You hate kufr and fusuq and isyan. From Allah wa ta'ala. Fadlam min Allahi wa ni'mah. That's blessing from Allah wa ta'ala. That's implicated primarily to Sahaba. And for us, if it's for us, it means among you a righteous people. Those righteous people is what make balance in this society. They advise you about all of these things. Otherwise, the society will go corrupted. So the main point today is be careful when you spread any news. Be careful with the news you heard about your brothers and sisters around the world. Don't get disappointed because of news. Because now we live in very difficult time. And news can spread with no proof at all. So don't think because everyone is talking about that's a proof. That's not a proof. There's a lot of evidence in this modern time. So always verify. Don't forward anything you receive. Try to make sure. Consider any news. And don't talk about the owners of others. Or don't spread any news which is make Muslims down. May Allah wa ta'ala forgive all of us. May Allah wa ta'ala purify our tongue, purify our ears. Purify our mind, purify our heart. May Allah Taala relieve all the pain from our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Wa sallallahu alaihi wasallam.